mighty God we serve. What a wonderful day to be in the presence of God, especially today. Yes, Lord, we bless you, we worship you. Receive all honor and adoration, receive all glory, receive all power. Let your name be glorified. Thank you for life. God bless you. Can we do justice to this word by sharing it with our friends, families? Let the name of the Lord be glorified in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing and continue to do. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we are, I worship you. We exalt you. We glorify you. We adore you. Hallelujah. Today is a great day in the presence of God. The Bible says there is fullness of joy. Holy Spirit, at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Do what no man can do today, that your name will be glorified. Amen. In the name of Jesus. We exalt, we magnify you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just begin to worship him, adore him, exalt him. Give him all glory and honor. What a mighty God, especially in this season. The Bible says, not of him that will it nor run it, but God is the one that showeth mercy. We ask that the Spirit possess us today. Holy Spirit, take absolute control of our life. Possess our being. We worship you. Can we just invite our friends also to join us today? You can call a friend to call a friend. Let's have a, a great time in the presence of God. For this is the day of the Lord. We are rejoicing and we are glad to be part of it. The world says in his presence there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. We are talking about dominion today. Expressing dominion. A lot of us used to express dominion. Some of us, we have lost it. But if you have been born again and you are now not where you used to be god is bringing you back this is the day and the year of the remnant god is going to call back the sons the bible says shall come to pass in that day today is that day that the mountain of the lost house shall be established upon all that mountains you will begin to take over different establishment again the house of god shall be called the house of prayer again where the children of god will begin to have deep revelation of who god is it's not just believing God is not enough. Believing is great, but it is not enough on its own. We have to get to the place of revelation where we begin to know this God. For the Bible says, Daniel eleven thirty two, that they that know the God they serve, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. So you don't just want to be in this kingdom and not be able to have power. This kingdom is a kingdom where you exercise authority. And the only way to exercise dominion is when you have walked into the deep path of God. It's a journey with God. Every time you accept Jesus Christ, the journey begins. But it does not end with your believing or saying, I do with Christ. That is the beginning. Oh, yakara baba. By today, God is going to open your eyes and you begin to journey that journey. And journey deep. The Bible says, deep, call it unto deep. As we go deep today, go into the into the inner part of and begin to search out. The Bible says in Proverbs 25, it is the, the intention of God to conceal a matter. Hallelujah. But the, the, what we do as kings is to search out each matter. Everything that has been concealed against you, concealed for you, whether they are for you or not, that you don't know, you begin to know it today. After today, you shall not walk it in ignorance anymore. Ignorance of the law is not an excuse. God is going to give you divine understanding. I remember when God asked Solomon, say, what do you wish that I do for you? He said, give me knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to be able to administer justice to these people that you have given me. Solomon have to go to this development of the soul which is the highest investment you can make on yourself. Third John verse 2 said, I wish above all things that thou may prosper, be in health, even as thy soul oh, prosperity. So the prosperity of the soul is greater than physical prosperity. God wants you to have all of them. That's the three angles of prosperity. I wish above all things that they may prosper financially, be in health. Even as your soul is deep with God, communion with God, 
fellowshipping with God, dining with God. Today, your soul will come back in the name of Jesus Christ. You are mightier than the mightiest. You are greater than the greatest, Holy Spirit. Make a name for yourself today. Do what no man can do, that your name will be glorified. We thank you for life. We thank you for, for the opportunity to come to your presence. We thank you for being with you. The Bible said for the entrance of the world, give it light and understanding. Standing to the simple, Lord, your word is the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. Let the word that we are hearing and speaking now not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that we bring glory to thy holy name in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Today is a great day. Today is an awesome day. Today is a wonderful day. We are just going to go straight to the word of God and begin to understand how to express dominion again. And some of you have been Christians and things pass by you. You look at things happen, but you cannot understand why they are happening because you don't know. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. A lot of us want to be free, but we don't want to know the truth. Today, we are going to unload, download, and begin to unveil the hidden treasures that are in the kingdom of God. Everything about God is concealed to some people. It's not public to everybody. You have to search for it. And by the grace of God, God has given us an insight by revelation in the work of our journey. Sometimes we are not even asking for anything. We just go in and walk with God as you begin to walk and things will be shown to you. Things will be open to you. Many of us, the forces you are fighting today, you don't need to fight them. When you know better, be better. The devil will just on his own disappear, go away, and you will not see them anymore. For Moses told the children of Israel, for the Egyptians you have seen today, you shall see them no more and forever. And it was so. For the Egyptians that you see today, you shall see them no more and forever. Everything that you are looking at today that is not standing well with you, you will see them no more and forever. Oh, yes, Lord, I'm standing with you in the spirit and in the physical. But I want us to go into the word of God. The Bible said here, the first place we are reading is Psalm 82 in verse 5. We are going to read down to 8, but if God will permit us, I just want you to see verse 5. The Bible said, there no not, neither will there stand. I want you to think about this thing. What is it that we don't know? God is saying that man does not know. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of order. Cause, out of order. What is it that we don't know? Have you asked yourself, what is it that God was saying that man did not know here? Have you thought about what it is? Is there anything to know more? There is something to know. If you look at verse 6, and God said, I have said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. So, a lot of people don't know that we are God, personified. God created man in the same image of himself and in the likeness of God. When you receive Jesus Christ, you receive the image of Christ again. The likeness of God is going to be as you walk with the Holy Ghost. Then you begin to manifest. The likeness of God is the character of God. The dominion of God. We are talking about dominion. Some of us, we have gotten his image, but we have not gotten his likeness. He said, I have said you are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. But because you don't know, you shall die like men. And fall like one of the princes. Now God is calling. There's a clarion call. Arise, O God. Judge the earth. For thou shalt inherit all nations. God is saying, let every God begin to arise in you. Let the God that is in you begin to come out. Arise, O God. And judge the earth. For you shall inherit it. Arise. That, let the God in each side of you begin to manifest. That's what it means by arising. 
get out from your slumber get out from mediocrity get out from shame and reproach get out from depression get out from demonic oppression ancestral forces familiar spirit arise and begin to inherit the earth oh it's 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 it's, it's, a, it's a portion that was given to man la korobo sakata bababa mazekete barika rabashi kotobobo arise every god in you begin to come back come alive now the bible says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world you got to get out and begin to dominate your community dominate your Your, your, your environment begin to take authority everywhere you are because God say I have said you are a God you are God and all of you are the children of the most high they do not know neither will they understand there's a lot to know about God they walk on in darkness all the foundation of the earth are out of course say God help me to know I want you to say to yourself, Lord, help me to know. There is something to know. There is something to know. I got to know this. So if, if God said that we are God, but we don't even know that we are God. God said we are, we, he created us that we are the children of the Most High. The Most High word here, Most High is Elohim. Elohim in the nature of God. When the Bible says, and God said, let, let us make man in our image after our likeness. The Bible is saying God called the Elohim, so the Trinity in Godhead. And there was a discussion of making man. And that was the nature that we carried. Oh, rah, bah, 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 bah. But we don't know. We don't know. Neither will you understand. Today, your understanding shall be enlightened as you begin to know what you did not know. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. The Bible says, least Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices the moment you are ignorant of something the devil takes over he said Liz Satan should get an advantage Liz the devil take advantage of you for you are not ignorant God does not want us to live in ignoramus if you look at the book of first Corinthians chapter 12 he said I I don't want you to be ignorant consigning the spiritual a lot of us think that we, we when you are living in the world you, you 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 see people that have spiritual authorities and people that brag about it you desire it sometimes some of us are scared but when we come to god you think that just making a confession verbally and receiving jesus christ that all those accolades and the power of god will be bestowed upon you no it doesn't Walk that way. Jesus said to the Jews that believed in him in John chapter 8, verse 30, he preached a great message. And the Bible said, And many believed in him. And Jesus spoke to them, say, Yes, it's good to be, be a believer, which is the beginning of beginnings. But if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed? So there is a place of continuation. And how do you continue? You begin to learn of him, you begin to live right, you begin to do his will. You begin to serve. Until God is difficult to reveal himself to you. Because the knowledge of God, I told you many times, is not what you hear me say about God. I can tell you about God, but God has to reveal himself to you for you to know him. Say, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You are the one that will the truth will be revealed to and freedom comes after you have known it. A lot of people are walking in darkness, like God said here, because they don't know. Neither did they understand. And they do not know. Neither will they understand. They do not know. Today we shall know. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Lord, I want you to speak to yourself today. Say, God, open my eyes and my, my ears. Let me understand and let me know the truth. They know not, neither will they understand. Lord, show me the truth. Give me the knowledge of the truth. Make me understand you. Because understanding of God is everything. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. But in all you are getting, get understanding. 
Understanding is an application of knowledge. When you knowledge have transformed to understanding, that means you already know. And the application of knowledge is wisdom. There are three things that changes over time. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. But I want us to go, how do we lost this ability that we had? How do we get out of where we were that God have to say to mankind? Because when you look at the book of Psalm 82 that was reading, God was talking to Adam. God was talking to the, the, the man that he created. He said, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundation of the earth are out of course. I have said, you are gods, and all of you are the children of the Bosai, but you shall fall like men and, and fall like one of the princes. That is, if you don't go back to your godly nature. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Now, how do man lose this? If you look at the creation of man in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26, God had to come in. There was a council meeting of the Godhead. The Bible said, and God said, let us. So we are talking about us. We are talking about the, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. They came together. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. So where we are talking about is you must get back to the place of dominion because before the formation of man, before the creation of man, the intention of God for man is dominion. Let them have dominion over the fishes of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. These are the jurisdiction of man. Man is supposed to have jurisdiction over the seas and the oceans. Everything that is the aquatic world, that is the first dominion. We must dominate the ocean, the rivers, the creek, all the valleys. Man must dominate. And over the fowls of the air, the atmosphere, man has three dimensional power dominate in the seas, in the waters, dominate in the air, and dominate on land. They shall have dominion over the fowls of the air. Over the cats and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So that was the mandate for man. Before man came, God have already outlined the mandate. And there was a description of what man should have. So God created man in his image and the image of God created him. Male and female created he them. But when man has been created now, God began to give man a charge. And in verse 28, the Bible said, and God said to them, hallelujah, and God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful, hallelujah, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have what? Dominion. So you cannot dominate if you are not fruitful. So you, the, 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 what's it called? The beginning of growth is fruitfulness. The beginning of growth is fruitfulness. Once you are fruitful, I'm not just talking about reproducing. Fruitfulness has to do with everything that comes to you increases. When you are fruitful, that is when you begin to multiply. You can not multiply if you are not fruitful. So it's in sequence. And once you begin to multiply, you start to replenish. That's when you begin to take more land and more space. Then you begin to subdue. So whatever was there before, because you are, you are, your size and your might is increasing, you begin to subdue everything around you and eventually you will dominate them. Hallelujah. And God specifically mentioned what man have to dominate. He said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it and have dominion over the fishes of the sea. God mentioned it again to man. Aquatic. Over the parts of the air, the atmosphere, both first and second heaven, man have to dominate. The Bible says, he that cometh from above is above all. And over every living thing that moves upon the earth, whatever is moving on the earth, man has to dominate it. That was the, 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 the mandate for man. But what happened? Hallelujah. What happened? God now, after God have created, that man that in, was in Genesis chapter 1 was inside of God. In Genesis 2, God formed the man. 2 verse 9, the Bible says, Out of the ground, God made, the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. 
and good for food. The tree of life also in the mix of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So God began to allow things to grow. After there was water and man was created, God allowed things to grow. But everything that grew there in the garden, we are talking about the garden of Eden now, where man was placed. We have a description of the trees that were there, but the, their names were not mentioned. So little tree that was mentioned here, the tree of life. Also in the mix of the garden, and there's another tree that was mentioned, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But if you go further, I want to trace back how we missed it. In that same Genesis 2 verse 15, the Bible said, and the Lord took the man, Adam, and put him in the garden of Eden to dress and to keep. That was his daily activities. That's the activity of daily living. He has to dress and keep the garden. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of the tree of the garden, thou may freely eat. So God said, eat everything. But the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat. For in the day that thou shalt eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. But there is something God did not mention. Remember in verse 9, the Bible told us that in the mix of the garden were two trees there. There was a tree of life in the mix of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That something is good does not mean that it is from God. Hallelujah. It's not everything that is good comes from God. So God said, don't eat the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But God did not say, don't eat the tree of life. And that was where man could have started in the tree of life. And when you go through the tree of life, man will now have the life of God. Because that was the intention of God. God have created everything. Man was formed out of the dust and God breathed into man the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So man, if man eats the tree of life, man becomes God here. Adam missed it. Adam went to something that God said, do not eat. Oh yes, Lord, today we are getting it back. That's why Jesus came. Jesus came that we should have that life back. If you look at the book of John chapter 10, verse 10b, the Bible said, if, if verse 10, he said, the thief cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's not where we're going. But Jesus said in be part of it, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The life that Adam did not get in the garden, that is the life that God is giving you today. The life of dominion. You must dominate. It. But you don't just dominate because you are a Christian. You don't dominate because you say, I am a born again. You don't dominate because you have a church you go. You don't dominate because you pray sometimes. You dominate because you walk on the journey of life. You begin to walk that walk. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, there must be a continuation. It must be a present continuous state. You do it consistently, constantly, and deliberately. And you begin to pursue God and you begin to search and seek him. The Bible says, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened for you. For everyone that seeketh, find it. And everyone that asks, receive it. That knock, doors are open. How many doors have you knocked? Let me tell you that. Let me tell you something. I'm just going to take us back to Romans chapter 8. By the grace of God, look at verse 1. The Bible says, Now there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. How do you be in how do somebody get into Christ Jesus? And let's go back to John chapter 3. When Jesus was talking to a man called Nicodemus, the Bible said in John chapter 3, verse 1. Uh, And there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. They look at the, the profile of this man. He, he was a man that has achieved a lot. A ruler of the Jews, that's number one. He's the same, came to Jesus by night. Hallelujah. And said unto him, Rabbi, we know, we know, we know. We have seen something. We have perceived something. We know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do this miracle that thou do it, except God be with him. And Jesus did not, was not impressed by all 
the uh, position of the man. The Bible said there was a man, so he was a man and he was a Pharisee. His name was Nicodemus. That's another position of him. And he was a ruler of the Jews. All description of the man, Jesus went to the man. The Bible said, and Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, except the man be born again. So Jesus took the position of a man because if he can transform the man inside the Pharisee, that man will change the Pharisee and change the Nicodemus and change the ruler. So Jesus knew that the what I have to speak to in the all the description of this man is the man. And the Bible said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now Nicodemus was confused and said, Ah, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother? This man was not just somebody. Some people think Nicodemus was an unbeliever. No. For you to be a ruler of the Jews, you have re read the Torah back and forth. You can recite the Torah. You understand the laws. But this man was walking by law. He was walking by flesh. Some people are in Christ Jesus, but they are still not walking by the spirit. There's a time, and the time is now. Jesus spoke to the woman in John chapter 4. He said that them that must worship God must worship him in what? In truth and in spirit. You can worship God in the flesh, yes, but you will not get much. It is going to be a shallow ground there. You have to go deep. You have to be led by something. You have to relinquish your right. You have to yield to the Holy Ghost until the spirit is poured upon you. You can't. So Jesus now went to verse 5 when he asked this question. How can a man be born when he's old and if you're asking and this happen this man was not naive he was a ruler of the jews he already understood the word of god but he was reading it in the flesh and jesus took him into the higher realm he said now verily i say unto you except a man be born of the water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So the first time when a man is born again, he can see, you perceive. You begin to perceive the kingdom. You begin to see things. But that does not mean that you have access to them. A lot of people are in the kingdom. They see things, they see miracles, they see signs and wonders happen. But they don't understand how does it happen. I remember when Jesus preached one day and they called him and said, Master, why is it that you speak to them in parables? And Jesus said, it is not given to them to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but it is given to you to know. So there are things that even we are in the same church, we are, we are in the same uh, uh, congregation, we are all the same co-pastors, or we are bishops, we are, we are of the same physical position and stature. But in the spirit, we are not the same. It depends on your work with God. You have to consistently pursue what has been given to you. So the... Man was a ruler of the Jews. He knew the Torah. He wanted to know more. You see, if this man didn't come to find out more, he will not know that there's another layer to be just knowing God. He will not understand that there's another layer that just coming to church. I'm talking to you today. You might have said, I've been a Christian 10, 20 years. I want you to re-examine your Christian life. Do you have the two things that was given to man? The Bible said, God said, let us make man in our image. And many people are wearing the image of God. In fact, we know how to speak the language. Every time you see a brother, oh, God, praise the Lord. God bless you. We can talk the church language. We can even come out to address uh, You know, the way we are prayer, the way we do this, but in the spirit, we are not anywhere. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. So what you get after you get born again and born of the water and of the spirit is you begin to go into the supernatural. You begin to walk in the spirit. You begin to move into dimensions. And that is where this word shall become flesh. As the Bible says in John chapter 1, and the word became flesh and dwelt among them. The word healing will not just be written in the Bible. You will not just hear the word healing. You will be healed. Oh, Labagasi, if you are sick here today, I want you to say to yourself, I am healed. I am is the name of the Lord. When you put it on anything, it comes alive. I am healed. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the sick say, I am healed. I want you to say to yourself, Jesus said, I am the light. The truth. Hallelujah. Say, no man coming to my father except by me. I am the light of the world. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm talking to somebody today. We missed it in Adam. Adam supposed to eat the, the, the tree of life. He went and ate the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Today, we know that tree of life, Jesus Christ. He said, I am come that they might have life 
and have it in abundance. The only way you dominate in this kingdom on earth is when you have the life of Christ. That is when you begin to express the likeness of God. You begin to be as God. You begin to represent God. You, when you wear his image as a son or a daughter, that you, you, you in that position, you cannot represent him. And even if you try to, you might not represent him very well. That's why the sons of Skiphas, even though they were sons, but the Bible said they were vagabond sons. So it's not every son that is a, is a right son. They are prodigal sons. They are vagabond sons. God is calling back every prodigal to come back. He has sons everywhere scattered. Remnants is coming back home today in the name of Jesus Christ. If you look at the book of Matthew, also 25, talking about the 10 veggies. They were all 10 veggies. They were pure. They had oil in them. They have anointing. But five were foolish what made them to be foolish the bible said that the oil they carry was just what was in the light they have there is no reservoir that's why you need to go deep the bible said deep call it unto deep you have to go deep day by day you have to dig deep to be able to understand dimensions and mysteries in this kingdom there are some things that you cannot articulate there are some things you can never hear in preaching but the moment you begin to go deep with god and you begin to walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit those things will be revealed to you. Prosperity will not just be written in the Bible, but you shall prosper for real. I want you to say to yourself, I am prosperous. I am successful. I have life of Christ. I want us to go back to that Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Thank you, Jesus. Look at what the Bible said here. It said, there is therefore now, now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, I told you yesterday that Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus is not the same thing. Christ is the office of the Christ. Jesus is the person of Jesus. So if you talk about the Christ, you are talking about his office as the administrator of everything that happens in the heavenlies. Time will not permit me to talk about it. First Corinthians chapter 12, talking about the, uh, um, the uh, differences in administration, but one Lord, which is Jesus Christ. And they, are, they say there are the diversities of gifts but one spirit, which is the Holy Ghost, and talked about God also. But Jesus Christ, the Christ, is the office. There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the... So it can be possible that you are in Christ and you are walking after the flesh. You cannot understand this level of dimension. mentions but people are being christ and they walk after the flesh the bible says, who walk not so there are two walking there so when you get into christ you will see flesh and you see spirit so where are you walking are you walking in the spirit or you are walking after the flesh that is what is going to differentiate the boys from the men that is what is going to differentiate people that will go deeper and make impact and the people that cannot who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit oh karabasi Oh, La bigo sokotobo rika na mama lika na mama. Deuteronomy chapter thirty, the Bible said, God said, He said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. I want you to choose life today. Everything that is about this kingdom is about the kingdom of life. You are here to receive life. I'm not going to lie to you. Everything you need is already in Christ. But how do you articulate them? How do you receive them? How do you get them? You have to go deeper. You have to go deeper. You continue to walk in the spirit. And be led by the spirit. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, that's in Romans 8, verse 14. For they that are led by the spirit, they are called the sons of God. You allow the spirit to lead you. That is the only way you, he takes you to where. And sometimes you are being led by the spirit. You are not asking for anything. But as you continue to fellowship with the Holy Ghost and move, the Holy Ghost will begin to reveal you and show you some dimensions. Some level of things that are so sacred. Things that, are, because God can never give um, things that are valuable of value to children. They will trample upon it. The Bible says, if a king is a child, it's, 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 it's considered to be as a servant. So one to you, if your king is a child, you must grow up in this kingdom. 
That's why a lot of people have been receiving and receiving and they have not received anything. You keep saying, I receive it. What do you receive? For you to receive something, you must have seen it. If you cannot see well, you cannot get well. You have to see. There must be a revelation of something in the spirit. For you to be able to enter into that deep. To be able to get those things that God has preached. So God said, I set before you life and death. Blessing and causes. Therefore choose life that put thou and thy seed might live. Are you ready to choose life today? Hallelujah. Are you ready to choose life? You don't want to walk in ignoramus. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 8. He said, which one of the prince of this world you see, which none of the prince of this world knew. That, that means the devil did not know about it. Demons didn't know. For had they known it, they could not have crucified the Lord Jesus. If they knew that if Jesus died, that life would come back to it. What Adam lost in the heaven, lost in the garden, God has restored in man by giving Jesus Christ. Everything that you receive is already in Christ. That's why Jesus gave us the formula to succeed in everything. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, he says, Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. You don't have to look for the additions. You just begin to seek the kingdom. And the seeking of the kingdom, you don't determine how many of the kingdom you get. You just dive into that ocean and begin to go deeper. Let the Holy Ghost begin to carry you, carry you deep on the wings of God. The Bible says, Jesus said, I will send a comforter and he will teach you all things. He will show you all things. He will make you to know all things. You will have to depend wholeheartedly on the Holy Ghost, ability of you to yield your, 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 your knowledge and your wisdom and your ability to the Holy Spirit is what will give you everything that you want. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all, everything, all these things, whatever it is, shall begin to add unto you. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus, you must seek God. I'm telling you, some of these things is not just, I'm not here to entice you with um, grandeurs of words, I want you to understand because your understanding is what will make you a standing life. If you don't know, there are things that you will never receive. I don't care how many times we say it and pour oil and prophesy to you, you will not receive them. But you must know as you begin to understand, the eyes of understanding shall be enlightened. Then you begin to walk in that dimension. That's where you can tell the devil, Get out of my family. Get out of my daughter and my son and they will leave because they know that you understand your position. You have dominion and you know it. You are not just saying it, but you know it. Jesus said to them when they were very excited that the demons were falling for them. And he said, oh, I saw the devil fall like lightning. In Luke chapter 10 verse 19, he said, but I give you authority. I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Where that power comes from, you have to receive it. You have to go deeper. Jesus was telling them, you are just babies. Oh, you are happy that demons are falling? Oh, come on, you will see angels. And you will see the heaven open. He said, I see the devil fall down like lightning. But I give you, by this time, they were just young Christians. And when they went out to preach, they were surprised at the level of dimensions and manifestations that was happening. But Jesus said, you shall say that things. You shall do even greater. On the day of Pentecost, when they came out, nobody taught them how to do deliverance. Until you have stayed enough with the Holy Ghost. There are some things you'll be asking questions. Sometimes people tell me, oh, how do you know these things? And you tell me and it come to pass. I don't have to have a pattern to know it. I just have to stay enough in the presence of God. For the Bible says, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. At the right hand of the Father, there are pleasures forevermore. You got to go deep with God. The work with God is not just what you have heard or what you have read. It is beyond that. You have to have time to dig deeper, to pray, to fast. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter 6, when we're talking about About demonologists talking about the, the enemy, he said, Oh, Karabali, Karama, Mama, Mama, Rekata Sakataba. He said, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality. I think before then, 
He said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of the Spirit. Be strong in the Lord. So you are not coming by yourself. You have to be strong in the Lord and you are powerful in the might of God. Hallelujah. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That strongholds, you have to be able to pull them down. Hallelujah. We got to get into the supernatural, into the place of divinity, and come against every authority. Every spirit of principalities, powers, rulers of darknesses, spiritual wickedness in high places. These are all in the heavenlies. If you have not been there, how can you command them? But the key to do that is verse 19 of Ephesians chapter 6. Say, pray always with all prayer and supplication. Praying always. That's why Jesus said, the key, man was designed to be a, a creature of prayer. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. He said, to always pray and not faint. You have to be a person that loves to pray, that desires to pray, and you know the certain times to pray. I've talked about prayer and the gates of prayers. There are gates that are open for prayers. I'll just call the, those times, but I don't have time to dig into it. You start in the morning by 6 a.m. That's the time of communion. We go in by 9 o'clock. That's the time that you begin to deal with your flesh by 12 noon which whatever country you are 12 noon is 12 noon when you come by 12 is a time for evangelism you begin to nations you begin to take over the atmosphere hallelujah and it, it, you go to 3 p.m that is the hour of prayer where god begins to reveal things to you and you get back to six which is a time of communion again and nine and 12 midnight is a warfare time but 3 a.m. is different. That is the time of mystery. So you don't have to pray all of them every day, but you choose the time based on what God has put in you. Those are prayer gates. It's all over the whole Bible. And if you understand the prayer and you stand on those times, there is no way that you don't get effectiveness in your prayers. You have to go deep. You have to go to the dimensions that are now. This is not a time that you just worship God shallowly or you talk about what you have heard, like the woman of Samaritan that was coming with the religious spirit. Jesus said that the time has come and the time is now that dead that must worship God, must worship him not in this mountain or in this, on, on Jerusalem, but in truth and in spirit. You must worship God directly. The worship of God is nothing but the spirit. God is a spirit. So when you have to connect with him as a humanity, you have to go into the dimension of the spirit. And who is best to take you there? The Holy Ghost is your tour guide. It's your navigator. Just anchor yourself on the spirit of God. He will begin to say, turn right, turn left, turn right, stop, move forward. And begin to take you through dimensions and begin to take you into the ranks. And sometimes you are there, you are not asking for anything. You are just there to make supplication. Sometimes it's just to worship God. But say that that must worship him, must worship in truth and spirit. Hallelujah. We are going to pray now. And God will begin to show himself mighty. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, yekarabashi kotobobobo. Lamaga sikatabarika na mamama. Worship him. Worship him, Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 6, verse 16, the Bible says, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself, servant, to obey. His servant ye are to whom you obey. Whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Everyone that you yield yourself to, that's who you are, his servant. I don't know what has taken you out and you have lost the likeness of God. Like Adam, God said, eat everything and the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat. And by the time he ate that tree, he lost the glory. I don't know what glory has 
been taken away from you or you have lost. You cannot dive into the dimensions that you used to be and sin has creeped, creeped into your life. I don't want you to beat up on yourself so much because man, the Adam, the clay that was clothed man of, is coming from the earth. So it's prone to go and sin. But you have to now relinquish the right by anchoring yourself onto the spirit. Because by strength shall no man prevail. It doesn't matter what character that the devil has manifested in you and the devil is using to control you. Today, every slave to sin shall be broken. In the name of Jesus, and we have to make an atonement and repentance right now. Genuine repentance. You might have been born again, but you are born outside now. Come back to God. It doesn't matter whether you are a pastor, an apostle, a bishop. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Not some people have sinned. Say all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So I want us to go and say, God, have mercy upon me. If you look at Luke chapter 15, verse 7. Jesus said to you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repents. More than over 99 of the just persons which need no repentance. In verse 10 of Luke 15, he repeated it. He said, likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. I want us to give God joy today. Everything we are saying is just to have a clarion call. Come back home. Come back. God was crying where we got in Psalm 82. God said in verse 5, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Lord, we ask that you wash us today. With the blood of Jesus, we come to you in a broken and a contrite heart. In the humility of our heart, we commit our spirit, our soul, and our body unto thy hand. Lord, cleanse us today. Make us to be who you want us to be. For the Bible says, a broken and a contrite heart, O Lord, thou will not despise. In verse 6 of Psalm 82, you said, I have said, you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. And verse 8, that's where I'm going to anchor, and I want you to get back to that place. He said, arise, O God. Let the God in you begin to arise. Judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. You are coming back home to the place of dominion today. You have to receive life. That was what Adam missed. The tree of good, of knowledge of good and evil was in the mix. And God said, don't eat it. But the Bible said there was another tree standing there, the tree of life. Adam, Adam missed life. And Jesus came. He said, I have come that they might have life. I received life today. In the name of Jesus Christ, ask God to wash you. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 9, if we confess the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that he died and resurrected for our sins, we shall be saved. Begin to ask God to wash you today. Confess him. Say, Lord, I confess you as my Lord and I believe in my heart that you died for my sins. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Once you have said these words, made declarations with your mouth. People study the word of God. Commit yourself unto the God, unto the word of God. Pray without ceasing. Fast sometime if you have the ability and go deeper. There's no way to access power in this kingdom if you don't deep dig. There is no way. Even if I pray for you, pour oil, lay hand upon you, I can be able to ask demons to leave. But if they leave, they'll wait for you outside. And if the house is empty, Jesus said they will come back and possess that person. So of what use is deliverance where you are not going to serve God? So that's why we teach you the principles of God. You have to know it for yourself. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, that when you do the exercise, then it will be sustainable. Because Jesus said, every man that you have given to me, I kept. Except the son of perdition. And he said, we should go and bear fruit. And that the fruit shall remain. We don't want to just be bringing people that we don't train them and they begin to make blunders and the devil will use through such people and come into the kingdom of God and mess it up. 
Nobody is exonerated from this. I include them. We have to do that today. That as you go, you begin to represent God in the place of dominion over the fishes, over the atmosphere, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. You must dominate in this three dimension. Everything that you need has already been provided. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Lord, we receive it now. We receive it. We receive it, we receive it, we receive it. In the name of Jesus, I just want to pray with you here. If you are sick and the, the healing power of God will come upon you. The Bible says he sent his word and his word healed them. Let the word of God that is coming come to you right now from the crown of your head to the sole of your foot and begin to heal every sickness in your life. Receive divine healing by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Oh, can I, mama, mama. In the name of Jesus, is there one that's possessed by demons? Based on what you have heard me say, you now know what to do. I speak unto every authority that is standing or walking with you or walking in you. That is not of God. Get out, lose him, lose her and let them go. Now, in the name of Jesus, I command you and rebuke you that foul spirit. Lose them and let them go. I rebuke every Luciferian power. Be loosed and be free from every demonic oppression right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for your daughter and for your son. Any one of them that have been caused by any man or woman, dead or alive. Turn all their causes and their challenges into blessings right now because they have known you. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus, for it is done. I'm grateful to be with you today. I'm very, very excited. And I know that God has spoken to you in the course of this ministration. But I want you to begin to do something for yourself. Love God with all your heart. Search him as if that's all you do. And you will see what I'm telling you. You will begin to manifest dominion. It is possible to dominate again. God bless you. Have a wonderful week ahead of you. I love you all with all my heart. But above all, Jesus loves you the more.